Joining me in the studio is the political commentator, Ogochuku Ikeako, to discuss the president's letter to Nigerians. Thank you for joining me this morning, Ogochuku. Thank you, Benny. And Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Now, let's get talking. What do you make of President Mahmoud Buhari's letter to the nation? Well, I, I, for me, I think it's a, it's a shift from, from the past. And um, um, to judge the spirit of the letter is to see, okay, how committed will he be in 2020 to what he said in terms of uh, electoral reform, security, and other issues that are that are, that are pressing Nigeria at the moment. Um, last year wasn't a good year at all for Nigerians, uh, for the country. Uh, we had a lot of issues from uh, police intimidation, uh, rising poverty, unemployment, and the rest of them. So for him, I just want to believe that he was the person that wrote this, not one of his eight. I just put it out for us to read as a country to say, okay, this is it. But if, for me, if he's going to follow the letter through, it will show a shift from what happened in 20, 2019. So uh, I don't know how committed him and his team will be to do that uh, because there's a lot of issues that at the moment that the country is facing. Uh, insecurity is rising, uh, poverty is rising. Uh, the economy is not at where it's supposed to be at the moment. Uh, so, but this already shows if they're going to, for the first quarter of uh, 2020, for the first, for the Q1, if they commit to this, what they will show the outside world, the investors, is that okay, 2020 will be a different, uh, different ball game for Nigeria. So, uh, to show uh, the, the climate is ready for, to, to accept the investment, uh, journalists will not be intimidated. People will not. The court will say, release someone, and you keep the person for as long as you wish before you do anything that you want to do. So, for me, uh, it's a good one if they will follow it through. But if not, then we'll go back to status quo. All right. In, in the content of his letter to the nation, he did state in a few sectors where he, he says his administration has, has achieved some good level of success. Security, the burden of that, the economy, and also the, the all-time anthem, corruption, the fight against corruption. Now, if you're to look at the, the entire sector of the nation, critically and holistically, would you agree that there's been milestone achievements by the administration of President Mohamed Buhari? Oh, I, I totally disagree. Uh, in fairness to what is happening in the country at the moment, uh, Let's, let's, take, let's start from security. Uh, there is, there is, throughout last year, we saw uh, how insecurity has been a problem for the country. Uh, just on the December, on December, I think on December 25th, we saw that terrorists killed some Christians in the north. And this is not just about the northern part of Nigeria. You bring it down to the southern part of Nigeria, uh, militancy is still rising. Uh, we have uh, courtism is not a problem in Lagos and across southwest state. Then you take it down to the southeast. Uh, they are still, still um, places where kidnapping is still an issue. So uh, altogether, we, we still have security issues that we're battling every day. People are not safe. People don't go out and feel that they're secured. And so even in Lagos yourself, even Lagos being the, uh, the commercial capital of the, of the country, there are some places you will not go at night. There are some places you can't even move around. Yeah, but Ogochuku, let's not forget that there were, there were places in the country that there were continuous reprisal attacks by these ex estimates. Yeah. Places like Borno, Adama, I mean, most of this we don't get to hear any longer. So can we say in that, in that vein that some level of success was achieved security-wise by this administration? Well, but, but in terms of what, the, what happened to Boko Haram, there, there's been a level of success. Yes. But for me, I, I don't think is I don't think, for me, like exam, you have one over 10. For me, I think it's three over 10. Because soldiers are still being killed. Which right? is really poor. Which, really is, which, is, which is still poor, not fair. Because uh, people are dying every day. Uh, Boko Haram caught Nigeria soldiers on live TV, on the, and people see them on the internet. So uh, it's, not about, it's not about whether it, it has reduced. The issue is that we we'll still have those challenges. And there's something that happened within the last administration. At a point, there was a media, there was a media backlash where people can't report freely. So of these issues, so it wasn't just about it wasn't just about uh, was it happening? It was happening. It, 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 for us to see what happens in this country on December 25th, some people were killed. Uh, nobody reported it. It took the Western media for them to report it. So for us to know, okay, this is what happened. So uh, on, on our own part, there are some things that we could say from the media part. What is happening? Is the media in the country free to report these issues? Because for me, I feel they are not. I feel that there's, like, there's been a heavy media clamp down on the country. There are some things you will say, they will take your station off from you. There are some things you will say, they will yank you off from the air. So in terms of uh, insurgency, it's, 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 the, the, it's not as it used to be before. But we still, have the, uh, we still have the pastoral conflict. And what we know now, because now that we've entered the Hamatan season, all right, and before you know, before you know what happened, the, the, the headers will start moving from the north down to the south, and that will cause another issue. So for us, just have to, okay, well, let's watch. As I say, for, the, for now, for the, next, for the next three months, I'll give them that break. For the next three months, let's see what happens. Let's see what, how, they, how they respond to the pastoral conflict, uh, how they respond to the uh, rising um, militancy yeah. across, across the country. So okay, I think we're going to bottom on this doing um, off the press, so let's, let's quickly do this. Now, okay. this is 2020. You're a political analyst. Yeah. What, what will be your message, 
your advice to the government and Nigerians as a whole? Uh, from the, 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 most, the most important thing that I think this country needs at this point is investment. And uh, every action, inaction, anything that we do as a country should suggest to uh, to the investor that this is a, this is the right climate to put in your money. Uh, we saw last year that Ghana, uh, Ghana went ahead of us, and, be, and they, are, they are currently the, uh, the place that has the high, highest level of FDI in West Africa. Nigeria has not shown so far that you can do business here and make money. Nigeria has not shown that. We see how uh, companies come here, they get intimidated by, by, by the agencies of the state, makes it difficult for people to, to make money. Already we have, we have a rising poverty level, we have unemployment, and the most important thing that we need at this point is to make sure that people can come in here, do business, and we, it, there's no sense in us still closing our borders in 2020. Right? We just saw what happened in Ghana, how Ghana was able to, to amass a lot of uh, FDI this December in terms of the whole Afro Nation and Afro China and the rest of them. What we need at this point is to bring investment. What we need at this point is to bring people to look at Nigeria is a same nation. But they do say that the closure of the border in the last few weeks have actually in increased our revenue and that a, a great amount of success have been achieved by the closure of the border. I think that, that's, that's the, the people that say that economies that work for the government. Because if you, if you go to the market, the market determines everything. The price of food is still high. People paid more for rice than they paid in 2018. So it, do, it doesn't make sense for them to take it in 20. What, what we need most importantly is for us to have a government that understands that free market will benefit us more than driving a statist policy that they are taking us back to the 1980s and the rest of them. What we need in 2020 for me, most importantly, is for us to have a market that is free, we'll have a government that respects the judiciary, and we'll have a government that understands that promotes the rule of law. And most importantly, well, before you know what, election will come. So we need government to speak in terms of unifying the country, making sure that the country moves as one, making sure that people understand that this is the only country that we have. And we need our leaders to say that, act that, and do that. If we can be able to do that, I think 2020 will be a better year for us. But like I always say, hope is not a strategy. So I'll watch and see what they do in the next couple of days and weeks before we judge them. But it's good for them to say, okay, this is the direction that I want to follow through this year with the letter. It shows, uh, it shows a good intent, but it's the action. Let's see what happens going forward. All right, thank you very much, political analyst and commentator Ogochuku Ikeako. Thank you for joining me this morning.